Welcome back. You're watching Al Jazeera. I'm Sahil Ram, and this is the News Hour, and these are our headlines. It did happen, and the Assad regime did it. U.S. political and military leaders have been making their case for waging war on Syria because of chemical weapons. Senior Republicans are also on board. But at the United Nations, President Assad's ambassador has hit back. Bashar Jaffrey described the U.S. as the bully of the world. Let's get more on this by uh, joining Kurt Volker. He's a former U.S. ambassador to NATO and is the executive director of the McCain Institute for International Leadership. Joins me now from Washington, D.C. Thank you very much, Mr. Volker, for your time. My pleasure. Military men and politicians have been at pains uh, for the past few days, and certainly today, to lay the case out for a military strike and garner American public support. Do you think they did that today? I think they've made a start. Uh, I think that they're moving in the right direction. They seem to be on target, but I don't think they're quite there yet either. Uh, I think that there are a couple of uh, issues of debate here in the United States. The first one is whether we want to get entangled in the Syria conflict at all, and you'll find people on both the left and the right who would prefer that the United States stay out. And then you also have people who are concerned about the overall strategy. So we do suppose we launch a, a strike against Syria in retaliation for the use of chemical weapons. Then what? Uh, Assad stays in power. What if he uses chemical weapons again? What if he kills more people without chemical weapons? What's the plan? And that's the kind of questions that I think the uh, two secretaries, Secretary Kerry, Secretary Hagel, were trying to address in the Congress today. They did seem to garner a bit more support than had been evident through the course of the weekend. Uh, but I don't think they're quite there yet. You're going to see votes uh, in the Senate and the House. I think the Senate is looking a little bit more sure, but I think you're going to still see a lot of questions from the House. It, it does say uh, quite a lot in the fact that even earlier uh, in the day, the president had both Nancy Pelosi on one side and uh, uh, John Boehner on the other uh, to reiterate that the case was being made for a limited specific strike and no boots on the ground. It's trying to get the message across to the public in itself when there is, in fact, conflict apathy across the country. Indeed. Uh, and just because the two leaders of the parties in the House are on board doesn't mean all the members will be, uh, especially on the Republican side. It's a very fractious uh, Republican caucus, and people are very much more attuned to the wishes of their constituents in the House. And we've seen public opinion polls come out today showing that nearly 60 percent of Americans oppose such a strike. And I think the real issue gets down to can uh, you thread the needle of saying that the U.S. is not getting bogged down in Syria, Oh, it's really just a limited strike, no boots on the ground, and at the same time say that having this limited military strike will indeed have a desired impact. What did you make of the Syrian ambassador's comments at the UN and calling the, the United States the bully of the world? Well, I think uh, someone representing the Syria government right now really can't uh, be taken uh, at face value. Uh, he's going to be saying whatever is necessary to deflect attention from what uh, his government, President Assad, is doing inside Syria. So if he can shift that blame to the U.S., of course he will. Of course, you sort of have been part of NATO in terms of uh, being the ambassador to NATO, knowing how NATO works. Uh, Anders Fogh Rasmussen was saying there'd be no NATO support. It was up to individual countries mm -hmm. uh, to behave the way they felt uh, it best. Uh, the Ban Ki-moon is also saying roughly that the UN should be taking the lead here. What do you make of his stance and how difficult his position is, knowing that uh, he's got America and their position on one side and, and how, for example, Russia and China feel on the other? Right. Well, starting with NATO, I don't see any particular reason why one would think that this needs to be a NATO operation. It's well beyond NATO's air responsibility. Uh, it's something where some NATO allies may have an interest in taking part or supporting a military operation, but others would not. And at the same time, countries in the region are far more important than many NATO allies would be. And countries that are already involved with Syria, such as Saudi Arabia or the UAE or Qatar. So it's not evident why this would particularly fall into NATO's lap. For the United Nations, that's a different story. The UN Security Council has a responsibility for international peace and security. And the use of chemical weapons would be a, a gross violation of international humanitarian law. So the UN would have an interest in that. The problem here is that, as we know, the UN Security Council is completely blocked by the actions of Russia and China, who seem to be acting uh, very much to defend 
the principle of state sovereignty and in so doing defending uh, President Assad in Syria against any kind of international action. And that's really what's prompting the U.S. at this stage to be looking at alternatives. Because after uh, as long as it's been, year and a half, two years, over 100,000 people killed, the U.N. Security Council still unable to act. Uh, it's getting to a point that uh, people are looking for alternatives. But surely that's what the U.N. is for and the Security Council in particular, to uh, debate these issues and then abide by the vote itself. Well, it's certainly, that's the UN's job. Uh, the job is to uphold international peace and security. Uh, we've seen many instances where it has been able to reach an agreement and take appropriate action, but we've also seen occasions where it hasn't. And the war in Kosovo in 1999 is a reminder where uh, nearly 1.8 million people in a much smaller country were refugees. And uh, it took a NATO action to uh, disrupt the Serbian paramilitaries that were attacking and uh, put an end to the conflict there. I think that's the parallel that some people have in mind from a legal perspective, even though the actual situation on the ground or comparing Kosovo and Syria, they're quite different. Well, certainly uh, much to mull over, certainly over uh, what we've seen today and in the days ahead. For the moment, Kurt Volker, thanks so much for joining us from Washington, D.C. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thanks for having me.